morning and welcome back to the channel. That's a good start to the day. I like that. Skip on sight. Uh, so today we'll be building many, many, many walls. Uh, well, three, which is quite a few. So I basically just need to get off a ton of wood. I need a cup of tea already. Whew. Right, okay, that is all the wood off. Skip's here, all the crap that I had out the front is now in the skip. A piece of wood, other pieces of wood. So I thought I'd quickly just cover what this means. So you see there, it says C24. So basically timber comes in different uh, grades. So you get C16, C24, the primary ones. So what that really means is the higher the number, the stronger the wood, the tougher the wood. So the four by three that we use as the base frame there is both pressure treated and C24 because it's got to be tough because it's bearing the weight of the entire building on the rods. Um, you don't need C24 for your walls, okay? C16 is a standard structural like wood that's absolutely perfect. It just so happened that when I went into um, Wix yeah, Friday, they only had C24, uh, so I picked it up. But I know that some people trip over that and they're like, oh, do I need C16, do I need C24? C16, done, easy peasy. But it just happens, that's what they had on the shelf. That's what I had like 50 lengths of, I could just put in the back of the van. So that's what we've got. So that's pressure treated and C24. So it's, these walls are gonna be extra tough. Um, but again, they're not holding up much weight. You know, you're just gonna have a couple, couple of um, roof joists on, all the 18 mil boards and then the rubber. And yeah, that, that weighs a bit, but it's not as if it's supporting another story above it. So if it was, C24 would be what you're after, but it isn't, so C16 is fine. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to figure out my height. So I've just done that. So I know that the wall height off the front is gonna be two meters to the front wall and 19, 1.9 meters for the back and sides. The way you work this out is basically off of the deck is 200 mil to this level. We've got 2,500 play with because that's the maximum we can have under permitted building regulations. So you've got that, you've got 175 for the roof, plus say 60 for like the 80 mil ply and the rubber joint that goes onto the roof, which kind of brings the height up a little bit. We've got a pitch, which we need to need extra, extra like 25 mil to take into account. So for the run on the roof, you wanna make sure you've got 25 mil drop per meter. So you're working out all these bits and pieces, your overall heights, all the materials that they're gonna be, and then just subtracting where you need to. And that left me with a two meter wall at the front and 1.9 at the back and sides. And then what will happen is the roof joist will go on the top, obviously, down. I've got 120 mil by 80 by five mil steel running across. Um, so yeah, sat down a weekend, quickly done my calculations, and that's where we're at, so that's what we're gonna do. So. I was watching a few YouTube videos myself because I just like to keep up to date. So what I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try something new. I'm gonna try what the, the uh, Yanks call gang cutting. Uh, so normally what I'd do is I'd grab every side, get my measurement, stick them on the chop saw and do them individually. Not today, today I'm gonna try it differently. So I'm gonna try gang cutting, which essentially means that I'm gonna set up a very quick jig, put on, I'll figure out how many studs I need and then basically cut them all at once. I'm as impressed as you are. So that is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna set that up, I'll talk you through it, and then I will do that and show you me actually doing it as well. So this is gonna be fun. I look forward to it. Right, this might take some explaining. Okay, so focus up, grab a coffee, pause here. It's actually not that complicated, but this is essentially me jiggy jig jig. So that's quite impressive. I can tell that you're already impressed. Okay, here we go. Look. So what I have essentially done is I've created a very, very quick jig. So all I did was grab two lengths of wood, this one and this one, then grab my meter long set square, put it in the place like hither, got it so it's nice and square, zip these just to the deck, just so they're done. So this is now set perfectly. I then loaded the bay essentially with all my wood, pushed it up nice and tight to every single end, okay? So that's nice and tight. So what this will mean is, when I do my cut, they'll all be exactly the same. Now, it's the first time I've done this technique, and already, A, it's gonna save me time, but the other thing that it's really done is, you really got a good feel for the stack of wood that you've got, okay? So as I was literally putting them into the bay, you can see immediately 
whether they are like bowed, twisted. So even when you pick one up, you kind of give it like the look down, make sure it kind of looks okay. But when you put it up against the others, you can see if it's got a bow going in that direction. And I'll demonstrate with this one here. So it looks relatively straight. And then when I stuck it down, can you see the gap? Massive, okay? So you can see there's a bow going in it like that. So it's tight at the back, not so much there. So by laying them down and doing that, you can see you've got a good stack of wood there. So this is perfect though. This will do for like um, the noggins, easy peasy. Chopped it to pieces, good as gold. So what I then done was I've chopped one to the right length on the mic saw, which is this one here. Okay, so that one is exactly, so these are all gonna be chopped, boom, 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 to that length. What this allowed me to do was, to get my circular saw, put it into that space there, nice and tight, so it's up against the cut. Mark that off with a pencil, which is now just there. I then measured from there to the end, transferred that measurement to the center and to the far end across to there. And then I put my level on, which is gonna be my straight edge, and just zipped a couple of like old bits of wood, just so this will be the thing that guides the car, okay? So essentially what I will now do is take the saw, get it, cut it, and it will basically sit up against that edge, the whole cut, boom, 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 boom. And that will mean I now have, how many have I got on there? I've got 25, that'll be 25 cuts done. Stack them up, that's my stud work done. How simple is that? And the reality is, it's not taken that long at all to really set this system up, compared to when you think that I have to pick one up, put it on the mic saw, put a pencil mark on it for the measurement, cut it, bring it over here, that's one, rinse and repeat. So the time you're spending going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, this is a much, much more efficient use of my time and effort. One fell cut, done. So I'll film the actual cut itself. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go around with a hammer, just very quickly, and just boom, just give me each a little tap because where I've put them in, I just want to make sure, like I said, they're nice and tight at the end. The other thing this does for me is that whenever you're using a mitre saw, you know, and you're doing your cuts the same level, but some of them are always slightly out, a couple of mil, whatever. This way, I'm going to get a perfect straight cut. It's all right, let's just wait a minute. Always happens when you start it. You get a perfect cut every time. They'll all be exactly the same replica of each other because they're all in the same bay doing the same thing, all tight. So this is it. So I'm gonna do this now. I'll get the, like I said, get a hammer, tap them back, and then, yeah, I will do the cut. And in one cut, I'll have 25 studs. Very exciting. Let's see if it works. Okay, and the other thing to do before you do it is to just double, double check that your one that you've cut and pre-cut ready is definitely the right size because otherwise if you get it wrong you're about to cock up a lot of wood and that's the only downside if you get your measurements wrong you've just lost well 24 say 25 lengths of timber and it's not that it wouldn't be the end of the world either you can usually pan them up as you need to but still you'd rather kind of get it right the first time so anyway 25 lengths let's time this and see how long it takes
open up as wrong size. No, that's our defeated attitude. It's going to be perfectly fine. But seriously, how quick is that? Like all those cuts, imagine each one over there, mark it, cut it, bring it over here, start doing your bit, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just going to stack those over there. They're ready to rock and roll. And that's the sole plate and the top plate to do. Easy, bloody peasy. I'm doing this again. Well, I, well technically I've got to because I've got 25, I need 31, so I've got another six to do. But yeah, you get my point. Happy, happy days. And there you go, pieces descended once again. And there you go, there is every single stud I need to build sidewall, back wall, and sidewall. And not only that, but I've now got a lovely stack of noggins, pre-cut, ready to go. Well, they're not pre-cut to size, but you know what I mean? They're ready, they're there. And I'll just do those on the chop saw. I cannot express how much time that has saved. But like I say, it's the first time I've done this. And don't think this is the only way of doing it. There are lots of different ways of doing this and doing like bulk cutting and stuff. This is just the best way that suited me in this situation. Um, but yeah, if you've got a lot to do, it's perfect. And the other thing is that for a lot of you guys who are DIYs and you want to knock one of these things up, it means you haven't got to try and borrow, uh, borrow from a mate or beg people to kind of get hold of a mitre saw. You can do it with a circular saw. I mean, that one cost me like, I don't know, 110 quid, just bare body. But you can get cheap ones as well. You don't have to go for like DeWalt, any one, Titan or whatever range you want to go for. But what a lovely, simple solution. And because building now, these walls will fly up because literally, get the base plate on. I'll show you how to do that. Header, top trimmer, boom. Just nail gun, boom, boom, boom. Sweet, isn't that? But I'll show you that in a minute. In the meantime, I'm going off for a cup of tea and a bite to eat. right -o. let's get building a wall, shall we? So, you notice I have a few very simple tools. Pencil, always comes handy. Tape measure, over there. Set square, and an off cut of wood, okay? So, here we have what's going to be the base plate and the top head. So what I've done is, before I start marking this one off, I'm thinking already about the wall that's gonna be coming off of this wall, okay? So this is going to be this back pole wall here, the first part of it, okay? So I know that I've obviously got a wall coming in this direction. So what I do is, I put that on there, and I do a mark at that point, okay? Because what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do what's referred to as a California corner. Uh, because what I'm thinking about, as well as like thinking future-proofing, is that I want to make sure that I've got like um, studs in place to carry the plasterboard, okay? So what the easiest way to do is, once I mark that mark across there, like so, I know that this is where this wall's gonna come off this wall going this direction. Now I need something here for this wall that the plasterboard can carry off. So what I'll do is, I will nail a bit of wood into that bit like that, and that will then give me something for the plasterboard to sit on. That makes a bit more sense as I kind of build it. But what that now means is that I now know in the center of this mark, at 22.5 right there that is my center stud mark okay so what i'll now do is from that center mark i'll measure 400 400 400 400 400 so on and mark it off and i'll show you what i do from there as well so give me hopefully that you can kind of see that a bit that's it right so what i'll do is give my tape measure fill it out like yay Get it lined up in the center, and I'll simply go 400, eight, 12, 16, 200. And I know there's obviously gonna be a stud at the end because I need one, so it doesn't matter that this is on size, I'll show that in a little bit. So now I've got those pencil marks on, what I'll do is make sure that my wood is butted up. I then take my straight edge, there's a slight bow in these, so what I've done is make sure the bow is not going the opposite directions to each other, so that when they're compressed, it'll close it up, because uh, obviously once I nail this together, that'll be fine. And then just literally take that 400, mark it, mark it, mark it, mark it, and you'll like this, last one, bit of fun, I'll mark it, okay? So now, I know that's exactly where my studs are gonna go. I will simply now separate these two off from each other. Never turn them around or do anything else weird with them, keep them exactly as they are. 
And before I go on any further with that bit, I'll also just say that what I've done with my pile of stud is, I've looked down each one and I found the crown, which is basically when you look down the wood, it'll either be convex or concave. The concave is gonna be the crown of the wood. So these are all laying down with the crown this side. Okay, so now what I'll do is, I'll pull this one out of the way. Grab my first stud, again, keeping it up the way that I had it lying down. Put that in there, like so. I'll then line up all the others on my stud marks because they're all across both sections now. I'll get my nail gun out and fire them in. And then I'll show you my California country. It's very good. Quality this is. I'll be back in a second. Or I could just show you. I might as well show you live. Everyone wants to see everything as I'm doing it anyway. So, right. Over here, you can see I've got one of the studs on this side, like I said. So that is going to be my California corner. I've just got it chopped up on a few off cuts just because it's easier to kind of nail it when I'm doing that. Um, but what I'll do is I'll grab me others. And just put them roughly in line with my pencil marks. Like so. There's, there isn't a lot to this. It, I know this like it seems quite complicated and stuff, setting up the jigs to make all the right cuts and stuff, but it really is simple. It, don't worry about it, it seems like it's a bit complicated. Any monkey can watch a video and then reproduce it because I'm doing it. So that's a good way of figuring it. Two more. Like this. Okay, so that's them all roughly lined up. What I'll then do is just pop this base plane up to it a little bit. And then literally, it's a matter of making sure, so before we nail them, you're gonna make sure they're gonna be lined up so the edges are meeting nicely, nice and flush on the top. No sort of weird deviations. Two nails in each is plenty. Right, so making sure at this point it's all lining up and looking nice. And now that is pulling, where it had a slight bow in it, now the nails are pulling it and forcing it closed, which is exactly what you want. Become a bit tighter. Line the last one up. And that is it, pretty much. One more done. Now, all we need to do is nail in a California corner. I'm just going to raise it up, make sure it's flush. And level exactly where I want it. Make sure both sides are done first because if there is a bow in the front middle, because I haven't fixed it too far up, I can push it down or pull it up where I need to.
are now, there's a box in there, but you get the idea. That is essentially the first part of that wall done. Now, because they're all cut, how easy is that? They've all got their four under centers, so I now know when I've got this wall built and a plasterboard in, I've got a perfect start, a carrier, 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 it'll finish on a 1.2, and then there'll be a half a stud that the next board can then carry on from. It really is simple. Right, I'll get this one up. All you need to do is make sure you've got your gun with you. Zip up. Spare bit of wood with a 45mm, 45mm, 45 angle cut on the bottom of it. And a couple of screws all ready to go. So, what I'll do is I'll just get all this lot up here, ready. quickly just get a quick level it's supposed to be roughly where it's going to sit I'll have to lean that way a bit that's fine so there's a very slight push at the front if you kind of push it back doing this bit on your guitar is not the easiest but it's not the end of the world either so this just means that hold it in place so now, it's not going to go anywhere, pretty much level, that was a good first try, and what I'll do now is, I'll build that wall coming that way, because that way I can level that one, level that one to it, and then I'll start this one going that way, so that one will support that one and vice versa, and keep it running through. this wall going forward again I need to make sure that I store my studs to be every 400 but I'm not just 400 I can't take the 400 off of this one because actually my 400 goes 400 400 400 and it's an odd size so I need 400 from this stud here so the easiest way to work that out is I've got my head I've got my base what I'm going to do is temporarily just stick that down there like so I will then measure from the centre of that stud, which is over here now, mark off my 400 there, transfer that to the side, like so, bring that over here, and now if I bring the camera around a little bit, I now know where my 400 is, or where that mark is. So here, my normal stud's gonna go and start the stud work off here, and then there is gonna be my 400 continuation. So when I put this part of the wall up, I'll have 400, 400 still, 400, 400, 400. So that I don't end up with a sort where I can't put a plasterboard on, 
halfway through, very nice. Put the next one on, I'll bugger it. It's not aligned with anything. So that's what I do. So, again, just take the old tape measure. Get it out. Mark off these 400s. They're gonna be four, eight, 12. 16. That's it. I'll get my set square, mark those off, put my studs in between, nail it all together, whip it up. Easy. Easy peasy. Now that that is done, so I've pretty much finished the back wall. There's just like, I don't know, like a hundred mil bit of wood stud work to do. <coughs> Quite a bit of the front of this side as well. Uh, but that is now secured to this one. So these corners are now leveled. And what I did was, when you're trying to do on your toddy, you're trying to get them level. I get the level on this one, working from this side. I then got a screw, screwed that through, so that I could then double check the levels once I was happy and you still got adjustability once you're happy then I take the nail gun straight through the back into that one and it fixed to get this wall level across it just got my big level through the center kicked it around a little bit until I was happy it's running parallel and also double checking at the back so you know the back of the, the wood is also true so it's absolutely spot on where it needs to be so what I'll do now is I run around with the nail gun and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put six nails in each bed all right so I'm going to put one at that angle, one at that angle, that angle, that angle, then these ones onto the centre will just go opposite each other. And what you're doing is by going into the wood at different angles, if there's any upwards forces on it, it can't be pulled out. If your nails are going straight through wood and you get a crowbar underneath, it's not too difficult to prise it up. But if they're going in at angles, yeah, it's now got a better grip trying to get it up, it's giving you more resistance. So that's what I'm gonna do. Quite fast. And it's nice just to have like your little McFodder so you kind of work it. And then that happens sometimes. So a little bit of a block. So I'll stop the video there because you get the idea. Because it'll take me a minute to sort out. I'll do that to all of those. I'll do the same to all of those in that direction. And then I'll build a tiny bit of wall there and then quickly crack off this side wall. A merry and happy days. Oh, look at it. There we go. Three walls, basically framed all the way around. Right, now you see, you see in a second the top trimmer, which is going over here. The beauty of this is so, you can finish on one. Um, two things for the top trimmer. One, as you can see now, it overlaps onto this one, which means when I nail it, boom, 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 boom. This wall's now fixed to this one. So it definitely is never going anywhere. Same for that corner, that one will overlap. The other thing is, it gives it extra strength. So when you're building like structural bits and pieces from wood, when, say for argument's sake, this is the back wall a second. If you know, that your roof joists are gonna fall directly over your studs. You don't necessarily need the uh, trimmer, right? But if, say, you think that your roof joist could be coming sort of here, you need the second layer, because what it does is that will then distribute the weight evenly through here to allow the weight to be pressed through here, okay? 
Again, more important for like stuff where you've got extra stories on top and stuff like that. But it's just good practice, you know. So what it does is it pins these two walls together so they can never separate. It gives you extra strength should your like roof joist not quite fit exactly where they should be going or you know, your four the centers. Um, I always try to get them running off the centers, 400. Um, but sometimes it doesn't quite work like that. So that's just what that does basically. It gives you extra strength and it helps to pin the walls together absolutely spot on. So that's why they're going on. So I'm gonna use what little wood I've got now just to kind of get them sort of started. Um, but I haven't got many long lengths left. So what I will do instead is I've got all these little bits and pieces. So I'll start knocking up some noggins and whip those through. Um, generally, I, there's two ways of doing it. Either you go straight through the center with all of them, boom, 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 all the way around. Or you sort of offset stagger. So you put one just offset, 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 offset. So I think I'm gonna put them offset. Uh, just because what I generally find is that if I've got one here and I file the nails in and then the next one is just above it, I can just file straight to the side. It's a lot easier just to pick up and put the gun in, boom. Wow, so many top tips, even I didn't know I knew so much. Right, sometimes, as you can see, so I'm offsetting. So what I did was I took the center of the wall between that point underneath, that point, divided it, that's the center point there, right? I then grabbed my massive level, put it on there, and marked all the way through. And I did that all the way around the walls. And now as you can see, I set one stud above that mark, the next one below it. So that way I've got, I can fire in, I can fire in that way, I can fire in that way. And even when I'm putting a plasterboard on, I know that if I measure the center of the wall, I know I'll have a fixing just above that line or just below it. So it's nice and easy to find your fixing still. Now, when you kind of get to this kind of part, where you've got one that's kind of floating and I can't really get a nail in through this side, because it'd be a bit difficult, I could just try and hold it in fire, but what that always does is the, the pressure of the gun, bang, means this is gonna be sitting downwards. So a little top trick is put a piece on here, right? But, and here's the trick, don't nail it, okay? Because if you nail this, yes, it will support this. As you can see, I've now fired the nails in at an angle, perfectly in line with that level, spot on, didn't move. If I had fired the nails into this, this is stuck in now, it's gonna be a bugger to get off. So what I do is I screw it so that once I've finished using it as a support, I can chop it. And the reason that's good is because when I fit the PIR insulation, I haven't got a cocky little bit to have to cut around. It's now gone, I've now still got my perfect rectangular shape to fit my PIR into. Always trying to think ahead. So there you go. Another top tip. I'm liking this today. And there you are. That is it done for the day. So there you go. There's your three walls all put in, all the noggins in. I put some temporary supports, both corners. So these walls are now leveled. And that just stops you from like rocking around too much. Two in the corner, like I say, these are all fixed into each other anyway now, but you put a brace across there, done. Uh, now you can see the California corners. Perfect, loads of space there to carry off of. One there for the plasterboard as well. Four of the centers all the way through. Same this side, four of the centers. Even once you hit a join of the wall, my 400 still carries on from there to that one. Easy, and from this side, the 400 is from there to there. So it's always taken into account so that you've always got something to carry off of. Uh, top trim is now in. So I had perfect amount just to knock it up out of the little bits of off cuts. So that is it, really, really tough for today. Lots of top tips there, so I hope you made it to the end of the video. Uh, if you have any questions, ping them to me, but if you like what you've seen, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, hit the like icon, leave a comment, all that jazz. It's always lovely hearing from everyone. Um, if there's anything today you kind of think, oh, you could have done that better, leave me a note. Just say, Steve, this has been a good way of doing that. Always happy to learn, I love learning myself. So yeah, whatever you're up to, have a good one, and I'll catch you tomorrow morning, where I will be osb the outside of this wall all the way through like that and i'll also be building the four piers between the windows because you've got wall window wall french doors wall window wall does that make sense kind of good uh, so i'm going to pick up the bits and pieces for that as well so that'll be made out of five for two ready to carry the steel across the top you can almost imagine it can't you uh so yeah hopefully get this front wall built tomorrow that can sometimes take a bit longer than you're thinking because there's a lot of like working out although to be fair i've actually sort of done a bit of that preemptive stuff so i've got the door edge worked out window edge taking into account the fact like 
10 mil extra for a bit of gap either side so you can like foam fill it and actually get it into the space. I'll explain a bit about that tomorrow. Um, but yes, hopefully I must bead front wall in and the roofing joist should be turned up tomorrow as well. So we'll see what turns out and what comes where, but that's a good plan for the day. Wherever you're up to, have a fantastic one. I'll see you tomorrow.